George Whitfield made the statement, let us never despair while we have Christ as our leader. Amen. I'm going to be turning to Psalms 23 today. I do want to remind everybody that you can follow along uh, with this morning's message on the Version Bible app. Amen. We're just kind of getting big time around here, I guess. Well, we're trying, but um, there's a link on our Facebook page that you can find and get to it and uh, follow along. Psalms 23. You know, I, I can't, I've tried to resist saying this, Sister Linda, so good to see you. <laughs> Psalms 23. But <laughs> it's not just for funerals. <laughs> it's not just for funerals, folks. I hope you'll read with me and, and feel what the Spirit has to say to the church today. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, <laughs> I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparedest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You got enemies? That won't stop God. <laughs> Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell. I like that word well, I'm going to hang out. I'm going to spend time. I'm going to slow down and stop and spend some time in the house of the Lord. And everybody say forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just lay our Bibles down. Let's lift up our hands. Lord, we need you today. We look to you today, God. Hallelujah. We want to glean from your word and hear what thus saith the Lord to the church today. We praise you. We worship you. We magnify you. Lord, I ask for help for an impartation, an unction of the Holy Ghost, Lord, so that I can teach and preach, encourage, Lord, in, in your word today to all the hearers, those that are online and those here in the building today and those that will listen to this message in the future. In Jesus' name, Lord, we ask, lead me, Lord, my shepherd. Lead me, Lord, my shepherd. Praise God. You can be seated. His name was Charlie Moore. Moved to a new town, community, and with his family. and He wanted to make quick friends, so it was spring, and he decided to join a local men's softball league. In the opening day game, Charlie took his family to the park, got him in the bleachers, and went and joined his team. And the game commenced when Charlie got up to bat, set his feet, squared his shoulders, your launch that ball he missed it by a mile he could hear the crowd just deflate and groan one lone voice could be heard over the groan of the people you can do it Mr. Moore again the pitcher wound up that second pitch come firing in he swung wildly and missed it again. You could visibly see the letdown in the air come out of the crowd. And again, 
there was a voice from the crowd. You can do it, Mr. Moore. Again, the third pitch. Charlie swung and missed. The silent crowd looked on. And a lone voice sounded again. That's okay, Mr. Moore. The game having ended, Charlie Moore got his family into the car, and as they made their way down the road, Charlie turned to his son and said, Was that you that yelled out, You can do it, Mr. Moore? Sheepishly, his son admitted that it was. And his dad said, Well, I have appreciate the encouragement, son, but I wonder, why did you call me Mr. Moore? Well, his son said, I wanted to encourage you, but I just didn't want anybody to know I was related to you. <laughs> Fans are folks who only go to church. They really don't do much for Jesus because they have other priorities. They're happy to show up and shout out encouragement at church, but they really don't want anybody when they leave here to know they're related to Jesus. They're willing to shout, you can do it, Jesus, and that's about it. There is a difference between a Jesus fan and a Jesus follower. But you can't say the word follower without recognizing who your leader is. In regards to Psalms 23, the ability and the commitment to declare the Lord as your leader really is not as common as perceived. Many know Psalms 23. If you've been to a funeral, if you've even seen half the Christian writings, you'll, you'll find it easily. The Lord as your leader is just not really, honestly, as common as it sounds. Many say he's their leader until troubles come. Many declare it until the finances are tight. Many intimate it until the health issue invades. Many even claim it until something they don't understand happens. Can I tell you that sheep are not like regular cattle. It's interesting and important that we understand why God likens himself not only to a father, but a shepherd. And we are his sheep. You see, God is not a cowboy who drives cattle. Rather, he is a shepherd who leads the way. He goes before us, he cares for us, and he is concerned for our well-being. We all know well the story of Job. If we were to take a look and read, you're all familiar, uh, familiar with the trials, the struggles, the pains of Job. But if we take it, I'm just going to take a quick glance before I go on at Job 42 and 10. At the end of his story, we get so enamored with the amount that he went through. We get so caught up with all. How many of us are going through things and we may be wringing our hands or pulling our hair out or even trying to put it on God or blame God or, 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 or get almost arrogant? And it says something here, and we learn something. In Job 42, it says, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job. It's kind of interesting that it's called captivity. It was a trial. See, if you're captive, you're caught. But when you let the Lord lead you, he can lead you out of captivity. Throughout the word of God, you'll find that if you'll believe God and you'll trust God and not question God, no matter the ten plagues, no matter the Red Sea, no matter the Jordan River, if you'll let him lead you, you're going to make it through every one of them. So Job, it says, it says, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his, when he did 
what a real believer does. Also, listen, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Now, isn't it crazy that you get all those previous chapters about all that he went through, and it's just a simple statement. It's all over in two sentences. Are you hearing what that says? We make the big deal out of the trial and the trouble. But let me say this. Thank goodness Job let the Lord lead him. Thank goodness even when he lost everything. Thank goodness that even when his health failed, when he lost every, everyone to death, when his own wife wanted him to curse God and die, he never let anyone else interfere influence his walk with God not an old song not an old friend not anybody to come in and dilute or dictate him away from the Lord leading him not his friends not his feelings not his wife not his troubles how many of us has delayed or even lost a certain outcome like Job's because we stopped trusting God and leaned on our own understanding or let someone in our life influence us out of God's will to where we get frustrated with his words so we'll lean on our own understanding. Job made it out because no matter what was going on in his captivity, he let the Lord lead him. He let the Lord, that's powerful. It sounds so simple, but how many times do we wake up and realize, if I just would have let the Lord lead me, even though I thought this way looked better or that way looked better, and we'll get into that, if I just would let the Lord lead me. Can you say that this morning? Lead me, Lord. Of all the psalms, known as, none is so well known and sweet. As a simple and short 23rd Psalm. In fact, I believe the strength and importance of its message is lost because it's become so well known. In its brevity, it contains the seeds of boundless hope, peace, and comfort. It is the personification of comfort. It's what we read when we want comfort. But just for a moment, we catch a glimpse into the shepherd's soul. We get a glimpse because it is a shepherd writing about a shepherd. David relays as only a shepherd could the confidence that he has in God. Confidence in God and his sovereignty, unquestionable reliance, no matter what he went through. It's imperative if you're going to be a real believer that you become a stalwart believer. The, the psalm starts with a powerful statement upon which the whole of the psalm is built. The Lord is my shepherd. David, a shepherd, watching a few sheep, dealt with lions and bears and tragedy, being diminished and, and, and what he was working at being considered something small. Speaking utters a statement that should gravitate every one of us. The Lord is my shepherd. There is an amazing tone of confidence about this sentence. David doesn't say, if the Lord was my shepherd... He doesn't say, I hope the Lord is my shepherd. He doesn't even say, the Lord is my shepherd, but. How many of us sound more like that than what David says? He says with confidence, the Lord is is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. 
It was stated as a matter of fact. It was stated with a conviction. It was stated as a declaration. It's almost like you could hear him declare it in that same tone that he spoke to Goliath. You come with me with sword and spear, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. Think about that. Think about the power behind it. Oh, a stalwart, committed saint of God that understands that no matter what winds assail and storms come, it's the stalwart saint of God. The Lord is my shepherd. Only those that can be led should lead. What a powerful thought. The God of all glory, the King of kings, the Ancient of days, the creator of the universe is mindful of me and watches out for me and my well-being. That's what a shepherd does. That coming from a shepherd that protected a flock. Coming from a shepherd that protected from lions and bears. That coming from a shepherd who recounts a story of rescuing a lamb out of the mouth of a lion. So when the psalmist tells us, the Lord is my shepherd, he's speaking from experience. Almighty God has condescended to the lowly position of being the shepherd of my life. He's concerned about us. He's concerned about the whole world spinning and yet each and every one of us are known to him. We struggle with that. Some of us struggle with that. I saw something amazing, and I, I don't know if this was a part of stirring me to this message, but back in the late 50s, early 60s, Sister Carol, they did a thing they, they, in England. This is in England, and having lived there, the, 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 sheep, the whole shepherding and sheep business over there is ginormous. And I, they did this thing on BBC because there was a shepherd that said, and he had a flock of about 500 sheep. And he said, you could put a strange, you could put multiple strange sheep in there, and I'll pick them out like that. And not only that, if you grab a sheep, I'll be able to tell you the number and its name and tell you about that sheep. Now, when I look at sheep, they all look the same to me. And I watched it, and they, they had, they, they, it's a film, you can go get it, it's on BBC. So they go and grab three identical rams from another farm six miles away, and they throw them into the group. He walks through the crowd, up, and he grabs a ram. And in all honesty, he, he's very aggressive when he grabbed it. In fact, one time, he saw one who was trying to get away from him. He grabbed it by the leg and yanked it out. And they had taken those three sheep that didn't belong there, and they'd put tiny crosses on their bellies to mark them. And bam, 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 one, two, three, he got them all right out of a flock of hundreds. And like, well, maybe he had an ear clip, or maybe there was, okay, this is crazy. Okay, so if it's so true and you can really know each one of them by name or number, they did it. They walked through the crowd. The guy walked through the crowd, and he said, okay, what's this one? And he said, he looked at it for a second, and he called out the number, called out the sire, called out the dam, called out if it had been a champion or it had won. I said all that to say this. If a man can do that with a flock of sheep, he knows who you are, where you are. He knows everything about you because he cares. Because the Lord is my shepherd. I can't get lost in the crowd. No matter where I go, I'm his. The Lord is my 
shepherd. What a glorious revelation. He who holds back the tides until the time. He that tells the sun when to rise. He that directs the fury of a storm and brings forth the rain from the storehouses. Sees every sparrow that falls. Tells the moon and the tides when to move. Knows each and every one of us by name. He who is master of all. The Lord is my shepherd. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. One of the sweetest words in this entire psalm is the word my. We like to say that word here in America. We got my stuff and my opinion and my attitude and my way. But the greatest my that you could ever have in your life is when you say the Lord is my shepherd. He is my shepherd. David doesn't say the Lord is the shepherd of the world at large. He leadeth forth the multitude as a flock. Nope, he says, the Lord is my shepherd. Can you say that this morning? Is that true this morning? The Lord is my shepherd. If he be a shepherd to no one else, oh Lord, be a shepherd to me. It's personal, it's intimate, it's wonderful. He is mine and I am his. He cares for me, he watches over me, he preserves me. He is my shepherd. The whole phrase the, the, is, is a present tense context which denotes the continual position of the believer. believer. He is right now my shepherd. He is right now in my situation, in my circumstance, in everything that may confuse my shepherd. Oh, you better watch out. I got a shepherd. Hallelujah. Praise God. Wherever I am, wherever I go, he is my shepherd. Not he will be tomorrow. Not he will, might show up at some point. He's my shepherd right now. As simple as it seems, this timeless truth that caused the 23rd Psalm to be the nightingale of Psalms. It is a song of peace and hope on the lonely breeze of the dark, long dark night of our trials. We've leaned upon it. There's a reason they use it for funerals. But can I revive it again today? Can I reinstitute this into our daily lives that when we get up in the morning or we're facing a dark night or we're finding ourselves struggling alone, we can find again, Lord, lead me. You're my shepherd. The words of the psalm are full of life and hope. I don't know about you, but it causes us for a moment to forget the sorrows and grief with which we struggle. It causes us to lift up our eyes to heaven with confidence that God is our only real help in dark times of trouble. In trouble, I'm not going to question him. I'm going to lean on him. My finances can't buy me out of my problem. Who I am or what I got hasn't helped me. But when I find myself in the darkness of night, the Lord will be a light. And the Lord is my shepherd. Hallelujah, this simple psalm brings more confidence than all philosophies of the world. This psalm, well known for its words of truth and strength, has helped believers for eons to overcome more doubts and more sorrows and more struggles than there are sands on the seashore. Thank God I can say the Lord is my shepherd. It's 
comforted the noble host of the redeemed. It's has sung courage to the armies of the disappointed. It has poured a healing balm in the heart of more believers than you and I could ever tell. Those words, the Lord is my shepherd, are punctuated by what he does. He leads me. <laughs> he leads me. I hope you can get the spirit on that. He leads. Oh, I'm not going to lean on my own understanding. I'm not going to go to this philosopher. I'm not going to go to this person. I'm not going to go to that subculture. I'm not going to go to this or that. No, 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 no. He's my shepherd. He leads me. He orders my steps. He lights my way. He is my confidence, my ever-present help in time of trouble. The Lord is my shepherd. He leads me. It is my hope. He is my hope. <laughs> he is that overwhelming presence and hope. Hallelujah. With the understanding of those three words, Lord, lead me from this song. If you'll allow it to penetrate your heart, you can declare no matter what's going on, he leadeth me. He leadeth me. There are times when even the best falter. There are times when even the most confident wander and get distracted. There are times those loving shepherd to step in and deliver us again. Maybe not from a physical pitfall, but from a mental fumble. Maybe you started to lean on your own ideology. Maybe you started to think that you had a better way and that you could question God and shake your finger and fist at God. Maybe you thought you knew a better way and God in his mercy and his benevolence stepped back and allowed you to wallow long enough for you to find yourself on your back so that he could come in and be your shepherd. Oh, hallelujah. I have on occasions preached from this psalm prior to today. And I'm sure that I will preach some more from it at some point. But I want to express, if you'll allow me, one quick thought from this psalm. He leads me. You know, nobody here needs me to give you the Greek and Hebrew translation of what you're going through to help you. <laughs> so I'll just give you Jesus. Beyond our own language. So can I just with the simplicity of David Simply say, he leads me. I'm not going to follow society's ways. I don't want to find and follow the latest pop stars, movie stars, or any stars. I want to follow the one that made the stars. Often what I do will not please everyone else. I will offend you. I will offend my own family. I will offend those that are faltering. My walk and cadence will not align with the carnal. Why? Because he leads me. I'm not going to fit in with the in crowd. I'm not going to fit in with the world because they do not lead me. He leads me. 
Jesus punctuated this very concept in John 10 and 27 when he said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow. Oh, I ought to read that again. My, what are you hearing? What are you quoting? What, 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 what is it that you, that you say in your darkest hour? Because I'm going to tell you something. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. You know why they follow him? The Lord is my shepherd. He leads me. I know I'm going to come across as peculiar because the world is not my guide. He leads me. He orders my steps. He guides me. Oh, what a consolation I have. Oh, what a blessed relief I have. He leads me. He chooses the paths that I walk. He directs and orders my steps. He orders my days and appoints my way. I will not gel with everyone. I'm trying to allow my shepherd to lead me. You know, I concur with Brother Job since we involved him this morning. Let's indict him one more time because he also made this statement, but he knoweth the way that I take. And I wonder why Job was able to say that. And I'm sorry, I'm going to frustrate some of my friends and some family today because I'm not going to seek to please them or to please you because he leads me. He leads me. You could turn around and tell me to curse God and die. You could turn around and judge me and think something's wrong. But I refuse to turn my back on my shepherd. I refuse to quote anybody else. I refuse to seek to find and follow anybody else's ideology. Lord is my Politics will not save America. None of that will, but my shepherd can because he leads me. I'm going to irritate the washy and the worldly by living by his word because the Lord is my shepherd. He leads me. He leads. altar. You question God. You give God the what for. And the gentle shepherd just sits back. I want to reach out to you today and remind you if you'll let him he'll lead you. He is the creator of the heaven and the earth. If you'll let him, he'll direct your life. He's a great shepherd. He's a great leader. He will lead you. He is the one who upholds all things by his power, and he holds you in the palm of his hand. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. But the next portion of that chapter, that verse says, and I give unto them eternal life. I don't know what you're following. I don't know what you're quoting. I don't know what kind of ideology you're leaning on to, but will it lead to eternal life? Because my shepherd does. My shepherd does he leads me not just through the problem but to eternal life i tell you what the lord is my shepherd and he goes on and says and they shall never perish neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand he leads you 
He can lead you. He never makes a mistake. He leads you. He, he's never met a foe he couldn't defeat. He leads you. He's never encountered a need so desired he wasn't able to meet it. He leads you. He never sleeps nor slumbers. Nothing takes him by surprise. He leads you. He's all seeing. He's all knowing. He's all powerful. He leads you. John said in chapter 10, verse 14, he goeth before them. <clears throat> he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. He goes before. Cowboys drive from behind but a shepherd leads from the front. Oh, lead me, Lord. Lead me, Lord. I will follow. Lead me, Lord. I will go. Lead me, Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. Remember that valley? Remember that, the one with the shadow of death? He got to that valley before you did. That valley you're struggling, he's already been there because he goes before me. You aren't walking anywhere that he hasn't first already gone. He was in the dark night before you ever arrived because he goes on before. Before you lift your head to heaven and cry out, Lord, where are you? Let me tell you, he was in the middle of your storm before you ever got there. He isn't just come, coming to your rescue. He didn't just all of a sudden devise some means of escape before you encountered the trial and trouble in your life. He led the way and he was there before you ever got there because he leads you. He doesn't follow you around, snatching you, unexpectedly from the jaws of the enemy on the brink of disaster. He's not running around playing catch up. He leads. He's not just waiting to hear your desperate cry before he looks in on your troubled life. He leads you. He's been ahead of you the whole way through the wilderness. He's already in your tomorrow. Establishing the very provision that you don't even know you need yet. Remember Mara? Remember when Israel got to Mara? And when they came to Mara, they could not drink of the waters of Mara, for they were a bit, oh, some of you were struggling. Oh, you're thirsty, and instead of seeking the Lord, you're, you're Chasing this and you're chasing that and you're, you're faltering from your shepherd because you want a quick fix because you haven't learned or realized to look right around you. There has no temptation or trial taken you that God hasn't already provided a way of escape. And so while they're sitting there, surrounded by bitterness, therefore the name of it was called Mara, and the people murmured against Moses. They murmured against their shepherd. What shall we drink? This whole God stuff, this whole pastor stuff, this whole shepherd stuff. The Bible says Moses cried to the Lord. <laughs> the shepherd knew the attribute of the great shepherd. And the Lord showed him who? Moses. What the sheep could not see. A tree. A tree. I see trees all the time. And when he, thank God for someone that's a shepherd that's following the shepherd. 
And when he cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. Trees don't grow overnight. That tree had already been prepared. It had already been planted. It had already had time to grow. God looked way ahead before you ever got there. And while you're freaking out, God's like, God had already provided and planned a prepared remedy. Oh, that's just one off, Brother Crow. Oh, okay. Well, remember Jonah? The people of Nineveh, Sister Carol, they, they, they were a mess. Oh, but they needed a shepherd. They needed someone to come. Not with just a fancy word of an opinion, but to direct them directly to the great shepherd. And so this secondhand bad attitude preacher did what he did. But in chapter 1, verse 17, the Bible says, and the Lord had, had, past tense, prepared a great fish. Way ahead of you, Jonah. Way ahead of you, smart aleck. Way ahead of you, sheep. I don't, we don't like to hear this, but sheep are dumb. Now, you don't talk to yourself that way, and that's fine. But I'm pretty brutally honest with me, and I try not to be brutally honest with you, but look, when I do something dumb, I go and look in the mirror, and I tell you, you're dumb. Anybody else ever done that? I have, I, have you ever realized, you know what, if I just would let God lead me, I wouldn't have gone through that. I'm dumb. Well, Jonah, the great shepherd knows you're a sheep and you're dumb too. He prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. This, Jonah, before you got the attitude, before you split, before you acted a fool, there was this great big giant prepared fish out there going, Okay, you made me. I'm grown. Where's this joker at? <laughs> and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. He's way ahead of us, folks. He's the shepherd. He's ahead. He leads the head, goes before us. He doesn't drive us from behind. He leads us from the front with love. Remember Zacchaeus? Spoke about him just recently. Behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was a chief among the publicans and was rich. And he sought to see Jesus who he was. And he could not for the press because he was little of stature. Sadly, he may be little of stature physically, but how many of us are little of stature spiritually that you can't see Jesus in your trouble? That instead of trusting him and let him be the your shepherd, are you hearing me? And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him. For he was to pass, for he was to pass, for he was to, it was all planned. That's that way. And when Jesus came to the place, hey, Zacchaeus, it was a setup. He looked up and saw him and said unto him, out of all those people, he knew who, when, and where. Come down. I wonder if maybe Jesus can't come to your house because you don't want to know because you ain't cleaned it. I wonder if Zacchaeus just got a crazy idea. I'm just going to clean my house this week because no idea Jesus is coming. You better believe that, that that tree that Zacchaeus climbed had probably been there a while. He had probably walked by it before and never gave it a regard. He probably walked by it a thousand times. And now I'm pretty sure that whenever he walked past that tree after that day, that's my tree. 
I wonder if he didn't walk by there every now and then with a pot of water. He knew I was coming and my tree had already been planted and prepared so that my little stature could climb up into another tree and see what I needed to see. Oh, what a loving shepherd. Lead me, Lord, I will follow. Job declared it. Job punctuated it. Job defined it when he said in Job 23 and 10, but he knoweth the way that I take. Why? Because he's gone before me. Lord, lead me. Lord, you're my shepherd. Somebody today, under the sound of my voice, needs to grasp a simple but powerful concept in these three simple words. He leads me. I wonder if we can let that Powerful truth grip our hearts today that he leads. He's in charge of your life. He's calling the shots. Nothing has come upon you unawares. It hasn't, nothing has surprised him. No strange thing outside of his perfect will has overtaken you in your life. He's leading you, directing you. He knows the way that you go. Keep your hand in his and watch as he leads you through this struggle to a better day, to a better place. Put your trust back fully in him. Say it with me. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. He leads me. He leads me. He provides. He makes a way where there seems to be no way. He's your shepherd. He, by his infinite grace and unlimited abundance, leads you. Yes, yes, yes. There are still waters and green pastures. God is a trustworthy shepherd. He's a dependable leader. He's a capable leader. He's good at what he does. He leads me through some rocky and barren places. He don't lead, lead me just to. He leads me through. He takes me through some dry wilderness times. He directs me through the lonely valley. And all along he leads me to the still waters and green pastures. He knows what's best for me. He knows where I need to go. He knows where I need to be. He has the ability to see further down the road than I can. He can see around corners, down in the valleys, over and above and beyond mountains. All I can see are the briars and, and the stumbling stones. All I understand is the ferocious heat and the insufferable oppression and struggles and troubles. But my shepherd goes before me. He's looking ahead. He knows that that green pasture is just around the bend. The still waters are still just a little bit ahead. And if I trust him, that's where he's leading me. If I rely on him, he'll lead me all the way through. But if I lay down right here, if I throw my hands up in frustration and blurt out ignorant counsel, if I quit along the way, I'll live and linger in the dry valleys instead of coming to the still waters. I want to encourage you today. Don't get lost in the process. The shepherd knows where he's going. Don't lose your way along the way. I want you to be seated, and I really hated to do this because it's lengthy, but I want to read to you a portion of 1 Corinthians 10. Listen, if it would help you to proceed, close your eyes and listen and get the spirit behind what Paul is saying. Moreover, moreover brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud 
and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ. But with many of them, God was not well pleased for they were overthrown in the wilderness. We know the stories. We know that they were led by a pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire. We know all that went on. And he says, now these things were our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither be idolaters as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. If that's not the world today, I don't know what is. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and 20,000. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpent. Isn't it funny that he li he's using Christ in regards to the Old Testament? Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. This whole entire Bible, every word, speaks of Christ. Neither murmur ye. Neither murmur ye. As some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyed. Now all these things happened unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition. Are you in a trial? You better go back in the Old Testament and read how to handle a trial. You better go find out that you may need to watch what you say. You may need to be careful who you're following. You may, hello? These are our, and it says it twice in this short discourse upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be attempted above that you're able, but with but will with the temptation also, listen to this, make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. How do, you, how do you make the way? How do you find the way? The Lord is my shepherd. He leads me. The Lord is my shepherd. No matter the darkness, no matter the trial, no matter the wilderness, no matter what I'm led through, I keep following through. I'm not going to get lost in the way, along the way. He is the way. And I, oh, somebody, listen, he leads. It's better than anywhere you could ever go on your own. Trust him. He is your shepherd. He leads you, and he's leading you to the still waters, to the green pasture. He will restore your soul. The journey might take a little time. The struggles may even seem to weigh you down. <laughs> but if you'll follow him, if you'll trust him, he will lead you into places where his grace and mercy will restore your soul. He'll replenish your strength. He'll give back to you more than you'll ever lose. Remember, Joe? Twice as much. As it's just a few short sentences after we go through chapters of struggle and wilderness and trial. He's your shepherd. He leads you in paths of righteousness. David said he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his Name's sake. There's a lot of paths. Some are broad. Some are easy. Some offer more comforts and seemingly less trouble. Some appeal to us, looking like the right or the best way for our lives. But the Lord even says in his word, I don't see how you see. My ways aren't your ways. He sees so much more about the paths that we are walking than we could ever conceive. He knows the end of a thing from its beginning. As we plot along, I've been plotting along for way more than 50 years. 
many times through my own faults and failures aimlessly putting one foot in front of the other not able to see too much down the road I can't see too far but I know that my shepherd sees all the way to the end I know that he sees the end from the beginning and that's why that I can take confidence in the fact he leads me he leads me he leads me that move that I wanted to make that I thought was so appealing to me seemed like the right path but he knows better than I do I could touch the story of Abraham and Lot and every one of us know that Lot took the well-watered plain. That looked like the right way to go. But there's something amazing in this story that I've never heard anybody bring out. Who got to pick first? Who got to pick first? Brother Ulu, who got to pick first? In which way to go? The Bible says Lot did. But... Because pastor is who pastor is. It's true and it's not true because Abraham chose way back in the era of the Chaldees who he was going to follow. And so it didn't matter the circumstance, the situation. It didn't even matter which way Lot chose because Abraham had already decided, I'm going to follow the Lord. Lord, you, lead. he led him. Out of the earth, the Chaldees, he led him all that way. And even though there were mistakes and struggles along the way, Abraham had chosen. And it didn't matter what Lot chose because Abraham had already chosen to let the Lord be his shepherd. It doesn't matter. The Lord is my shepherd. And the Lord said unto Abraham in Genesis 13, here, that Lot was separated from you. Did you hear that? And he finally got away from the one that was led by sight after he had already pitched his tent towards Sodom. The Lord says to Abraham, lift up your eyes and look from the place where thou art, northward. Listen to what it says here. Northward, southward, eastward and westward. For all the land which thou seest to thee will I give it and to thy seed. Who cares what the, who cares what the others do, Lord? Be my shepherd. I don't know, and in all honesty, I'll, I, to, to be honest, I'm pretty sure I'd have chose like Lot did. I'm pretty sure in the frailty, me, frailty and the honesty how many times I've chose what looked like the best and followed the crowd and what everybody said would be. How many times I, I would have thought that this way or that way. But I tell you, I've come today to tell you, Lord, be my shepherd and lead me. Let's stand. You and I can take confidence in the fact that he will never lead you astray. God will never take you in the wrong direction. His paths are righteous paths. His pathways may not be the easiest, but they're always the right. The trials that he leads you through will work out his perfect plan and will in your life, molding you and making you into the very person that he's called you to be. David didn't whine and cry about the struggles of fighting lions and bears. He trusted God. And so while everyone else faltered, why everyone else who seemed to look the part and play the part, act the part, but fell apart, it was David that slew the giant. Why? He had a shepherd. These times of testing that you and I face, God is strengthening our resolve to establish our confidence in him every step of the way, through every mountain, through every valley, 
through the peaceful times of plenty into the terrible times of trial. He leads us in his paths of righteousness. He leads you. You can trust him. Whatever you're going through right now, today, this moment, you can trust him. Wherever you find yourself today, you can trust him. Whatever you might be facing, take confidence in the simple but profound thought. The Lord is my shepherd. He leadeth me. If you'll follow him, he'll lead you through the hardship. He'll lead you through the difficult place. He'll lead you all the way to heaven one of these days if you'll trust him and follow where he leads. David speaks it. He says it in Psalm 23, with such confidence and clarity. He who knows what it means to be a shepherd. He who knows how short-sighted sheep. He who understands the shepherd cherishes the sheep. He cares for them and he loves them. He cares for you and he loves you. He will protect them like he'll protect you. Even in his own life. Oh. Did he not do that? Did he not provide a tree that we call a cross and go before us for the need that we have right now? Oh, the Lord is my shepherd. He's my shepherd. He loves me. He cares about me. He's already gone ahead to a cross made of a tree. For you and me. For you and me. I don't always know where I'm going. But I really don't have to. He leads me. He leads me. Sometimes I have questions without answers. But that's fine. He leads me. Sometimes doubt tries to assail me and rise up within me. Sometimes it even tries to grip me. But I have learned in those times, I find my confidence in the simple truth that the Lord is my shepherd and he leads me. I will not turn to the right or to the left. here today or you're listening online if you believe that he is your shepherd and he leads you it only remains for you to finally make up your mind to follow him wherever he leads you your only task our only task brother Ulu to follow. Is there someone here today listening that your humanity has vacillated? You've questioned. You've gotten upset. to hear this today to reaffirm your trust in him maybe you started to lean on your own understanding or started to walk by sight or questioning or maybe I don't know maybe right now maybe right now in this place you need to lift up your hands towards heaven and let him speak peace and confidence into your soul he is your shepherd he will lead you all the way home 
I wonder if we can do that right now.